Okay, so I have made a wire armature the same way f for my Vulture as I did with my Crow. I've just followed the contours of the simple sketch that I made. And I've also got together a piece of clay that's about the right size for the body. So what I'm all I'm going to do now is just cut that not quite all the way in half, but close. And I'm going to fit it over the top, right up against where the neck is. And I'm going to squish it down to make sure that the wire is firmly encased in there. Birds from the back are also going to look kind of like a teardrop shape as well. It's all the kind of meat and things are all up in the top, really. All their muscles were flying and even their leg muscles are up there. I mean, the back's really just tail. I decided to use the thin wire for this one instead of the thicker wire just because I thought if I doubled up the, th the thicker wire it would be too thick. So I just um, bent this wire into four pieces and twisted it to get that look. Okay, so next I'm going to do the neck. And for that, I'm going to roll out a very skinny snake snapping it. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it around. Kind of trying to stick it down as I go. Next I'm going to do the tail, unlike the last one where I did the tail <laughs> in the wrong at the wrong time. Now I'm a little bit more prepared. So I'm just going to add some clay to the end of that wire first, just so that there's something on there. I don't want the wire sticking out at all. And it doesn't have to be completely covered because the tail will cover it up. But I just want something there. Kind of flattened. In the shape of the little natural fat tail underneath. Okay. So I'm going to do this one a bit differently to the last one. Because it's a bit bigger and look like 
something I've messed up. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to make the basic shape of the tail. Pencil, gosh, sorry, I'm like right in the camera. And I'm going to make lots of lines down the middle. And I'm going to break the ends as well so that it looks like individual feathers. Like that. So I'm going to do the wings next and I'm going to do them a bit different to the last one because the last one was a lot smaller. This one's a lot bigger so that I can kind of um, shape them a bit easier with my fingers, which I find a lot easier to do. So I'm just getting two similar shaped balls and I'm going to shape them into teardrops. Kind of like flat and then flat, flatten them more on one side than the other and then this one I'm going to start to point, I mean because they hold their wings so strangely I don't know if this is going to work, their wings are kind of flared out when they've got them open a little bit so I might just leave it quite fat at the bottom. And let's see, so I'm just kind of start here. And then in my reference photo, they're just kind of sitting like this, just hanging. Gives it kind of like an unco characteristic. So I'm just going to smooth that on in the back here just so it stays in place. And he's standing like he is in the picture. My wire is just coming at an angle so they can sculpt around. A bit easier. So do the second one now. And before the head, <clears throat> I'm going to make his little collar because I was going to put fluff on this guy, like. Um, like, oh gosh, what's it called? Flocking. But I decided against it because I didn't do it for the crow, so I was going to keep it consistent. So I've just rolled a little sausage, and I'm going to hold him really gently. And I'm just going to push it down around his neck. Because it does go all the way around okay it's a problem with the clay being so thin and fragile gets messed up all the time okay so the head finally um, belches I've got weird heads. <laughs> Everything about them is a little bit weird. Um, so, as you can see from my drawing, hopefully you can, they've got quite a big kind of curved beak and so I'm going to try and get the right shape by using uh, one ball of clay for the head and the beak. So because the uh, head does, there's not really a transition from the head into the beak. So, if you can see what I'm doing. I've not filmed like this before, so I'm a bit awkward with it. And 
things aren't turning out quite the way I want them to because I can't get them. <laughs> Normally I have them about, you know, just in front of my nose, really, to be able to see what I'm doing. And this is... Okay, so I'm checking with my reference photo just to make sure I get the shape. Right, and oops. I think we're almost there. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, otherwise I'm going to be here all day. So, I'm just going to connect that head on now and I can fix that beak again since it's on there because I've just squashed it. So, he's a bit bigger, and so the textures, I mean, feathers textures really, you only can really see individual, if they're, um, like the, the, the tail feathers and, excuse me, the, um, the ends of the wings, you can only really see those textures, um, because they're so big. If the feathers aren't coloured, you can't actually see individual feathers. It's more like um, it's more like a kind of bumpy look. They almost look kind of bumpy. So this guy, I'm going to put texture on the wings. Oh, try and hold him really gently. Put texture on his wings. And hopefully I can paint him in a way that it's going to look more like feathers. We'll see. Because you can get away with all kinds of things with paint. I might have to come up with a better way of sculpting feathers. I've never sculpted feathers before. Okay, so I'm just going to smooth this wing on at the back just to make sure they look kind of even. And I'm going to give his little ruffle collar a bit of texture as well. And I'm going to just do that by pushing my pin in and kind of wiggling it around so that it kind of breaks it up a bit. It looks kind of I'm not going to say fluffy, but looks like it could be some kind of fit. Right now. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I like that he has like a crookedy kind of neck. I think. That works really well for a vulture because they've got like all these kind of weird bumps and lumps all over them and they're just they're pretty ugly things in general so the last thing that i'm gonna do for him is i think i'm gonna put some eyes on him with my bigger tool i think and they have their eyes quite close their beaks as well and close together so they can see a good distance okay okay so I've done a bit of experimenting with the feather texture and I've come up with 
this. So vultures are kind of, they have all their feathers kind of sticking up around this area here because, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why they have that, but they do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to get this wire out of the way. And I'm going to kind of run it along under the clay like this, kind of cutting into it a little bit. And then I'm going to lift some of it up. And I'm going to do it in kind of different directions so that it looks a little different. And I'm going to pull it up. Feathers on the top there. So what I'm going to do on the top of his wings is just pretty simple. I don't want to touch the top where I've just made those feathers. So I'm just going to pretty much draw the feathers on in quick half moon motions. So like this. And that's going to give it some texture and I'm going to change it up a little bit every now and then to just make them a bit longer or different shapes. You could get into making each individual feather if you wanted to. Like moulding, um, like sculpting it and putting it on. Or sticking it over the top with real feathers and things like that. But I think that... Unless your bird is going to be your central focus. I don't think you would need to do anything like that. So I think he's ready for baking. I will just smooth his neck a little bit more. Alright, here's that. Yeah, maybe. And yeah. Yeah, I can't touch him. Alright, I'll just leave it wrinkled like that. So, I will go ahead and bake him and I will get back to you. I'm going to take my smallest pointy needle. This is just a sewing needle, like I said before, that is just in the end of a pencil. And I'm going to put